Hi, this is John Hansen, and I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how to set up and submit calculations in Spartan. So I'm assuming that you've built a molecule, um, or you can build a molecule, and you're ready to do some calculations on it. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, one. Um, we're going to go into the builder here, and let's build dichloroethane. So I'm going to have two carbon atoms, and then I'll put a chlorine atom on each end, one on each carbon. So there we go. And there's my dichloroethane. Um, and for purposes of illustration, I'm going to move this into a slightly different conformer. Now remember, a conformer is uh, a different orientation of the molecule that differs only about rotations, about a single bond. And so if I click on a bond, for example, this middle bond, and I hold down, in this case, the Option key and move my trackpad, I can rotate this other chlorine. If I move it this way, you can see here the two chlorines are sort of move them so they're right on top of each other. That's called an eclipsed conformation. Or I could have them sort of in this orientation when they're about 60 degrees, or I could have them all the way 180 degrees apart. I'm going to start off with them kind of fairly close together like this, maybe not perfectly close together. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look uh, in this tutorial about different things in the setup window and specifically setup calculations. So when you go to set up a calculation, you're given a number of different choices here that you need to think about. And we're going to look at each of them uh, in turn and uh, get just a little bit of information about what they do and, and some general ideas on how we might select uh, between different ones. So if we take this first drop-down menu here, you can see we have five choices. Energy, Equilibrium Geometry, Equilibrium Conformer, Transition State Geometry, and Energy Profile. We won't talk about the last two right now. They're a little more uh, um, advanced topics. But these first three are ones that you might be interested in using. So the first one that I'm going to look at is the Energy calculation. And in an energy calculation, you're just going to calculate the energy of the molecule as it's shown in the builder. It's not going to do anything else. It's just going to calculate that. Now, we can select different types of calculations. We'll get to that in a minute. I'll just use this default Hartree-Fock. This is sort of a molecular orbital quantum mechanical calculation. Uh, and we'll just say, OK, that's great. Let's uh, go ahead and do that. Um, when we want to do our calculation, we have to submit it. If you just say OK, it actually doesn't do anything. Uh, it'll just kind of go away and be looking at you, and you'll be thinking maybe you submitted a job and nothing happened. So we're going to hit the Submit button. Whenever you submit a job, it's going to want a file name for that job, and it actually knows uh, that this molecule is 1,2-dichloroethane, so it's uh, giving me that as the default name, but I could type in anything I wanted there. So I'm going to save it under that. It says there's an item there already. I'll say OK. Off we go to our calculation. So there was a window there that said it had started, and now you can see it's already completed. It didn't take very long. After you do a calculation, uh, if there's an error, it'll usually show up in that window. But it's always good to go up uh, under Display and look at Output, and that'll show you the output of the calculation. So in the Output file, uh, you can see it's telling us what kind of a calculation we did, we did an energy calculation, which is also sometimes called a single point calculation. Um, it's telling us this uh, RHF is that Hartree-Fock, and then the basis set, we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, um, gives you some more information. And then down here, uh, it's telling you what the energy is of that molecule. Now this is kind of a funny unit, the Hartree, uh, sometimes also called an atomic unit. Um, it uh, is a large negative number in this case. Because what it's doing is it's actually telling you the energy of bringing all the electrons and nuclei together. Um, and when you do that, because the electrons get attracted to the nuclei, it goes down in energy. So you have a very low energy. So you want this number to be larger, to be lower in energy because of that negative sign. Uh, just to give you an idea of the magnitude of this, one Hartree is about 627.5 kcals per mole. So look, we have almost a thousands of those times 627. So this is a very, very large negative number. OK, but there's only one number. It didn't change the molecule. If I close this output window and look at it, it's actually the same orientation of those two chlorines as there were before. So the energy calculation is um, interesting if you want to get that exact thing. But oftentimes, when you build the molecule, it's not in 
the lowest energy confirmation or, or something that's uh, close to it. So you would like to do an energy minimization. In fact, when you hit this E button, remember that's what it does. It does an energy minimization. And you can see those two chlorines now are about 60 degrees apart. What's interesting is that it didn't make them go 180 degrees apart, even though later we'll see that's a lower energy. Because when you do an energy minimization, it just goes to what's called the local minima. It can't get over energy barriers. Okay, so let's go back to our setup calculations. So the energy was just giving us the energy of whatever structure is shown uh, on the screen. More typically, what we want to do is an equilibrium geometry. That's the same thing that you're doing when you use this energy minimize button. It's, this essentially would be called energy minimization in other programs. If we wanted to do exactly what this E1 did, we would choose here the molecular mechanics one. We'll get back to those choices later. But let's say we want to do an equilibrium geometry at this Hartree-Fock. Now what it's going to do, it's going to adjust the geometry to get to a lowest energy point. So let's go ahead and submit that job. It's submitted it. It's off and running. Now notice that it's going to take a little bit longer than the other one because it has to adjust the geometry and calculate the energy each time it does that until it finds the lowest energy. So if I look here, you can see these two atoms are now about 60 degrees apart. It's adjusted them a little bit. And if we look at the display output window, we can see that now we have five different steps that it went to. So it started out at minus 992.43, 479, and the energy decreased, that is this number became bigger because it's negative, and eventually it got to the point where it said, wow, it's not really changing very much anymore, I think I'm at the minimum and I'm going to stop. But it had to go through an energy calculation five different times, so it takes a lot longer. At the bottom of the calculation, it also tells you how long it took, so this was about 6.8 seconds of CPU time to do that calculation, that is all of these together, and the wall time is how long it took from when you submitted it to when it actually finished. Uh, so that includes read-write times to the disk, etc. So that's always slightly longer, so in this case almost 10 seconds. So that's an energy minimization, which again, when we look at the calculations, is called an equilibrium geometry. However, if you want to get the actual lowest energy confirmation, then you can do the equilibrium confirmer calculation. In the equilibrium confirmer, it's going to try to find the arrangement of atoms, and again, just ones that differ by single bond rotations, that will be lowest in energy. Notice that it doesn't give you any choice as to what kind of calculation to do. It's all going to be molecular mechanics MMFF, and that's because it might have to search for a lot of confirmers, and so it needs a relatively fast method, and molecular mechanics is the fastest. Uh, in other more advanced programs, uh, for example, the full-fledged Spartan, you can actually define this as other computational methods, but in Spartan Student, it's only allowing you to do this particular uh, calculation. So let's go ahead and submit that and see what happens. It started. Notice it got done really fast because it's uh, molecular mechanics. And now look at those chlorines. They're now 180 degrees apart in the so-called anti-confirmation. So it's been able to find that that, in fact, is the lowest energy confirmation uh, for this molecule. And that might be what you're interested in in your calculation is finding that lowest energy confirmation. Okay, so let's go back and look at our calculations again. So those first three, energy, equilibrium, geometry, and equilibrium confirmer, probably the equilibrium geometry is the one that you're going to be using the most. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now we're going to go and we're going to look at this second drop-down window where we've got several different choices here. Molecular mechanics, semi-empirical, Hartree-Fock, B3LYP, EDF2, and MP2. A lot of sort of strange little uh, mnemonics here for these various calculational methods. Now let me just give you a, a, a quick tour of these. Molecular mechanics, remember we talked about that earlier, is sort of like atoms connected by springs. And it, the program knows what the normal bond length is, the normal bond angles, and it knows how much energy it costs to distort those. And so it, it tries to use that to calculate what the structure should be. But it doesn't actually know anything about uh, electrons in terms of solving the molecular orbital equations, the Schrodinger's equation, etc. So we can't get things like uh, inter, uh, distributions of electron density, etc. from the molecular mechanics. The next one up, and by the way, these go in sort of order of increasing complexity, uh, is the semi-empirical method. 
A semi-empirical method is trying to solve Schrodinger's equation, but it has a lot of approximations. Um, we can't solve Schrodinger's equation exactly for anything more than a hydrogen atom anyway. Um, and it tries to uh, also put in some parameters uh, to make the calculations be a little more accurate and um, also not to have to do as many calculations. So a semi-empirical is pretty fast, and if you need to get things like uh, molecular orbitals and stuff, it's your fastest way to get that. Molecular mechanics can't show you anything about molecular orbitals. Its accuracy, however, is fairly limited. It's good for qualitative sort of ideas, but quantitatively it's not very accurate. Hartree-Fock is um, the first of what are sometimes referred to as ab initio methods, which means they're not putting any external parameters. They're just trying to solve Schrodinger's equation. However, again, there's a lot of approximations that have to go in, and it has to simplify the problem by not really uh, including something called electron correlation. So um, you're hoping that when you do a calculation that the electron correlation isn't particularly an important issue for your calculation. Uh, B3LYP and EDF2 are two different flavors of something called density functional calculations, which again are trying to minimize the... Uh, uh, arrangement of the electrons around the nuclei. Uh, in some ways they're similar, they use some of the same sort of strategies in Hartree-Fock, but philosophically it's sort of a different sort of approach. These do have built in sort of some sort of electron correlation component. Um, and in fact I would say the B3LYP has become sort of the, the sort of standard method that most chemists use. You get you sort of the most bang for your buck. Uh, out of it. Uh, and finally, this other one, MP2, is uh, sort of a modification to Hartree-Fock to try to include some electron correlation. Um, it uh, takes uh, considerably longer, um, and sometimes it actually overcorrects the Hartree-Fock. So, you know, if you're thinking about the level of the calculation, they get higher as we go down here, uh, which means it, they take longer, uh, but hopefully you're going to maybe get more accuracy. But again, B3LYP seems to be a, a very common one now. Uh, EDF2 is another flavor that uh, the people at Spartan really uh, like and so tend to use that a lot in their calculations. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and say we wanted to do a Hartree-Fock calculation. Uh, there's one more little tab that comes here that we need to talk about and that's called the basis set. So the basis set is sort of um, the functions that you're going to use to construct your electron density. And you can see that we have several different options here, 321G, 631G star, 6311 plus G star star. As you go up here, you're using more and more functions to get a better and better fit to reality. So in the same way that if you had a bunch of data that you wanted to fit with an equation, uh, you can usually fit it better if you use more parameters in your equation. If you're trying to fit the electron density, you can fit it better if you have more basis set functions. Now, of course, the trade-off is that it takes longer and longer to do each of these calculations. Typical now, uh, 631G sort of seems to be a standard, uh, so the B3LYP 631G star would be a standard type calculation. Let's kind of look at some of the differences in the speed just so that you can kind of get a feel for it. Let's go back uh, by default, if you go in and select to do a calculation, uh, the Spartan student will select Hartree-Fock 321G for you, which is probably the lowest level uh, Hartree-Fock that might be uh, useful in, in many cases. So let's go ahead and take this uh, molecule we have here, and we're going to do the equilibrium geometry again, and let's submit that job, and let's see how long it takes. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. So you can see this takes a lot longer than the other types of calculations that we were doing. But, you know, maybe that was, uh, you know, five to ten seconds there. Uh, we can see exactly. Let's go to our uh, display output. Okay, it did five steps. There it is. 6.4 seconds of CPU time, a little under 10 seconds of total time. Uh, so that wasn't too bad. So that was the Hartree-Fock at the 321G level. Now, if we want to use a larger basis set, the 631G star, you can select that and submit that calculation. Let's see how long that takes. Now, this might not take quite as long because we've already actually gotten to a fairly good equilibrium geometry by doing our previous 321G, uh, but it's still going. Nothing's happened yet, so it's taking longer. Um, 
you, oh, there we go. Let's just see how long that took in terms of the calculation. Oh, it only had to do four steps, but you can see it took almost twice as long total time, 20 seconds, and CPU time, 14 seconds, as it did for the 321G. So you're getting, presumably, a little better accuracy, but the timing is taking a lot longer. By the way, when you go to different uh, basis sets, you can't compare sort of results from a calculation at a 321G basis set with one at a 631G basis set. Um, it's always going to be a lower energy with a 631G because you're going to get a better fit. Um, and so comparing between different calculational methods isn't really uh, useful. So if you're comparing two different isomers or something, you want to do them at the same uh, level of calculation. So that took about 20 seconds. I won't go through it now, but of course in your setup you could have done the B3LYP. And it turns out the B3LYP is similar in the amount of time it'll take to the uh, Hartree Fock. Uh, so sometimes a little bit longer, but because of the fact that you're getting to include some electron correlation, in many cases uh, this gives you a little better result. So again, I would say the standard method that most organic chemists use when they're just doing routine calculations would it be, in fact, the B3LYP method with the 631G star basis set. Okay, that gives you a little idea of how to set these up. I don't expect that you'll know all the nuances here. In fact, in many cases, we'll tell you which computational method to use. Again, I'll just point out that in the um, activities menu up here, let me cancel this window, uh, we can look at topics, and for example, here's a topic of theoretical models. So if you want to know more about all these different models, here's Hartree-Fock methods. Uh, here it's talking about basis sets and how those actually work. Um, beyond Hartree-Fock methods, that would be, for example, the MP2, um, semi-empirical methods, etc., molecular mechanics, and I sort of skipped over, but there's also the um, density functional is talked about in here as well. So. Um, if you want more detail, that's a good place to go uh, to read up a little bit about it. But that probably gives you enough to get started in uh, submitting different calculations.